pursuit. Pursuing God, that's the theme for this week. Pursuing God, and I said, now, I, mind you, we were in North Carolina a week ago, and I had to be reminded, well, not really, that I was going to be bringing work this morning. I thought, okay. So I'm on vacation and I have to try and pull something up and all the things that we were doing. And then, of course, we got to be Grandma and Grandpa. And Nathan and Jessica came to stay with us on Wednesday. And it reminded me of when I was a mom. I, a mom of young children. Amen? A mom of young children, five of them. And I thought to myself, what does pursue mean? And so I looked up the definition. And um, there were a couple that were quite interesting and sort of filled out what I thought it meant. So the act of pursuing, and it gave the example of in pursuit of the fox. An effort to secure or attain Quest, the pursuit of happiness. The action of following or pursuing someone or something, an activity of a specified kind, especially a recreational or athletic one. And then it gives some examples of activity, hobby, pastime, diversion. We like diversion sometimes, don't we? Um, recreation, occupation, trade, vocation, business, work, job, employment. And then the last little comment in quotation said, a worthwhile pursuit. Pursuing God. So what does that mean? And I, and I started and I said that I remind, was reminded of when I was a mom. And then I even, as I was writing that down, I thought back when, before we had children, what was my pursuit of God like? We lived in Sneeds Ferry, North Carolina. We lived in a two bedroom, fully furnished apartment. It had sand for the driveway. There were several apartments together and pine trees. And I remember that what I used to do, because I didn't really have a job at the point, is I would sit down and I would read scripture and I would write notes down, and I would read scripture, and I would write notes down. That was my pursuit of God. I was getting to know him. Like our son, I want to know you, Lord, like I know a friend. I want to pursue you like I pursued the apple of my eye when we were in high school. I want to pursue you, Lord, and know you. Who are you? How am I to know you? And the only way I thought I could know was in scripture. So I did that a lot. And then, of course, babies started coming. And my time, well, was kind of taken up with a baby, my first, who decided that all she wanted to do was eat every hour on the hour for the first three months of her life. I didn't get much time to do anything. I might have got up to, get, to go to the bathroom or maybe sneak in a shower. But my, but my time for seeking the Lord was completely gone. And then, of course, when she was actually sleeping, finally, I was blessed that she did take a six-hour stretch at night to sleep. But by then, I was exhausted. I didn't want to do anything other than sleep. So I didn't do much pursuing. And then, of course, more children came along. And how did I do that? And I thought, well, the only way that I can get any time to myself was to lock myself in the bathroom. <laughs> and they even tried to follow me there, in the bathroom. Mom, I'll be out in just a minute. Just leave me be, <laughs> you know? So I had five of them knocking on the door, chasing after me. And I remember hearing even a story of, I don't know which mom it was, she used to pull the apron over her head. And the children knew that when she pulled the apron over her head, not to bother her because she was in pursuit of God. So there I was, a mom of five children, trying to pursue him. And then, of course, they became teenagers. And the pursuit time changed a little bit. There was a little more time for me to seek after God and look after him, but not 
have seen them less before children. The pursuit of God, a worthwhile pursuit. Something that's no. necessary. No. I know that when we're learning about our no. app, the apple of our eyes, when we're, we're learning about our future spouses or our employment, we, we really focus in on that person. We never give up learning about who they are. Our Father God, and Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, they are real people, real persons. They're not just this, the Holy Spirit is not just this ghost that's floating around in the air, right? Jesus is just not this, you know, Jesus loves me, this I know, or he lives in my heart. That's not just, you know, Father is not just big God up in heaven that cannot be touched. He tells us in his word to seek him. Those who seek him diligently as if vital requirement. Vital. Think about that. What is vital to your life? You must have water. You must have food. A vital necessity. Seek after diligently as if it were a vital necessity. And what does he say? He says, those that seek me diligently, they'll find me. If you want to turn to Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse, uh, verses 29 through 31. I'm going to be reading out of the Message Bible for a couple of the scriptures that I have this morning. So it, it changes it a little bit, but follow along. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 29 through 31. But even there, if you seek God, your God, you'll be able to find him if you're serious. If you're serious. Looking for him with your whole heart and soul. When troubles come and all these awful things happen to you in future days, you will come back to God, your God, and listen obediently to what he says. God, your God, is above all a compassionate God. In the end, he will not abandon you. He won't bring you to ruin, and he won't forget the covenant with your ancestors, which he swore to them. If, if you seek him, if you're serious, he's not going to abandon you. You're going to find him. So there were other scriptures that I had pulled up. I'm telling you, I had done all, I pulled all sorts of things. Seek, 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 seek. Where am I going? What am I going to say? What is, what is it that I have to share? And, and Pastor reminded me last night, okay, teacher Tina, because that's what I do. I want to teach. I want to pull all the information all together and give it to you so that you have it. And I thought, you know what? I'm not going to have nearly enough time to do that this morning. So all of us here in this congregation, right here together this morning in this family, we all know that we're supposed to, supposed to seek the Lord, right? How many of us have heard that message before? Seek me and you'll find me. Scriptures like in uh, 2 Chronicles, let me go there, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, and I'm going to look at 12 through 18. God appeared to Solomon that very night and said, I accept your prayers. Yes, I have chosen this place as a temple for sacrifice, a house of worship. If I ever shut off the supply of rain from the skies or order the locusts to eat the crops or send a plague on my people and my people, my God-defined people, if my, if, if my people will humble themselves, right? My God-defined people respond by humbling themselves. Praying, seeking my presence, and turning their backs on their wicked lives, I'll be ready. I'll be there ready for you. 
I'll listen from heaven, forgive their sins, and restore their land to health. If my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Not a new message to any of us. We all know to seek the Lord, to humble ourselves. But why don't we? When I was raising up kids, when I had five of them and was so busy in my house, what kept me from seeking, from spending time, from diligently requiring of him as a necessity for life? What keeps you from diligently seeking <clears throat> a worthwhile pursuit? Let's look at Psalms 34, 14. I'm going to read this one in the Most Holy Version, the Amplified. And the reason I use these other versions is because it adds so much, so much more depth to the meaning of what it's saying. Because sometimes if you read it in the NIV or the King James, you kind of get lost in the words. You know, like, well, this brings out just a little bit more so. Psalm 34, 14 says, Depart from evil and do good. Seek inquire for and crave peace and pursue it go after it who's the bringer of peace holy spirit or father god crave i like that crave you ever crave something chocolate ice cream pizza you know, French fries. I had such a craving for French fries last week, you know. What do you crave? If you require him as diligent, diligently seeking him, require him as a necessity, crave his presence. But why don't we? Let's turn to Colossians. See, a lot of the scripture verses that I was finding when I was doing my research were all in the Old Testament, and I thought, well, you know, we are a New Testament people. Things have changed. So Colossians chapter 3. And I'm going to go back to the Message Bible. We're going to start in verse 1. Read one and two. So, Paul's talking to the people of Colossae, right? So, if you're serious about living this new resurrection life with Christ, act like it. Pursue. Pursue the things over which Christ presides. Don't shuffle along, eyes to the ground, absorb with the things right in front of you. Look up. And be alert to what is going on around Christ. That's where the action is. See things from his perspective. Pursue things over which Christ presides. Don't get so concerned with the things that are going on around you. I think that the reason why I may have had trouble seeking and pursuing was because I got my eyes focused on everything that was going on around me, instead of remembering what my focus should have been. And by saying that, I don't mean that my life as a mom wasn't important, because it was. I was entrusted with the lives of five little people to raise them up, to love the Lord and serve Him. And if you're serious about living this new resurrection life in Christ, act like it. To raise them up so that they would act like they were serious about the Lord. And perhaps that might even be some of the reason why some of us here today may not always seek and pursue God. Because we've got our eyes focused on everything that's around us.
So let me go just a couple chapters over to Colossians chapter 1. And I'm going to read verses 9 through 14. You know, again, Paul's talking to the people at Colossae and to the Colossian Christians there, and they had heard so many wonderful things about the believers there. And this is what he's telling them. Be assured that from the first day we heard of you, we haven't stopped praying for you, asking God to give you wise minds and spirits attuned to his will, and so acquire a thorough understanding of the ways in which God works. That's even the same for us today here. We pray for you guys that God will give you wise minds. That you will know and understand his ways, how he works. We pray that you'll live well for the master, making him proud of you as you work hard in his orchard. As you learn more and more of how God works, you will learn how to do your work. We pray that you, you'll have the strength to stick it out over the long haul. Not the grim strength of gritting your teeth, but the glory strength that God gives. It is strength that endures the unendurable and spills over into joy, thanking the Father who makes us strong enough to take part in everything bright and beautiful that he has for us. Let's read on just a little bit. 13 and 14. God rescued us. Here's the reason why I seek. Because God is good. And he loves me. God rescued us from dead-end alleys and dark dungeons. He set us up in the kingdom of the Son. He loves so much. The Son who got us out of the pit we were in got rid of the sins we were doomed to keep repeating. My pursuit for him is because he loved me. To know him and know of him, to know everything about him so that I can make him known. So let me ask you these questions. And you don't have to answer me, but keep them in your head. What are you pursuing? Does it have eternal value? Is it drawing you closer to God? Or is it keeping you from time alone with Him in prayer and in studying the Word? Are you seeking things above or earthly things below here? Are you being deluded with any modern day philosophies or traditions that contradict the word or aren't even in the word at all? Are you pursuing any legalistic rules which are not clearly taught in the New Testament? How about this? Any mystical teachings or prophecies that can be supported in the word of God or have a tendency to add something which isn't there or which seems to be for only an elite group of people. What are you pursuing this morning? And does it have eternal value? The word over and over again, Father God tells us that if you seek me, you will find me. Jesus talked about ask, seek, and knock. Who are you seeking this morning? What is your one passion? Do you want to know the Lord this morning as you know a friend? I do. And in order to get to know him, we have to dedicate time to knowing him, to spending time to reading his words. 
So, short message this morning. It was 20 minutes. Pretty good, huh? I usually go for an hour. Teacher Tina, I want you to bow your heads. And I want you to think about what the Holy Spirit has been saying to you this morning. Has he pointed anything out to you that you might be pursuing instead of him? He's asking you to lay it down. Father is asking you to lay it down and follow him. Is it religious activity? Is it your employment? Is it your family? The things on earth? None of them is worth more than to know Christ. Father, we come humbly before you. And as your word says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, that's what we're doing. We humbly come before you and we know that we cannot do it on our own. There's nothing within, within us that will help us to follow after you but that precious Holy Spirit that you've provided. So Holy Spirit, we ask now that you help us. Help us to lay down all the things that we carry around that so easily beset us. We put them down like we put down the suitcase after a long journey. Help us to follow hard. Follow hard after you in our pursuit to know our Father God. 